Hi, I'm Larry Buxton, and this is Leading with Spirit. Our three-year-old granddaughter is in the phase of rejecting any food she's not familiar with. Her parents will put out a tasty new vegetable or fish on her plate for the first time, and she'll look at it and promptly announce, I don't like that. She reminds me of when I first traveled in Europe years ago. I went with a friend who wouldn't try any of the local cuisines. And while others of us ate calamari or pierogies or bouillabaisse, Joel, at least, learned how to say burger and fries in four different languages. Every one of us has our preferences, ways we like to do things, habits we're comfortable with, procedures we like to follow. And as we grow as leaders and as mature adults, we learn to distinguish our preferences from our principles. And being open to new approaches enlarges our perspective and our character. There's an amusing story in King David's life when he experiences this. In 1 Samuel 25, he tries to finagle a banquet for his 600 soldiers out of a local landowner. And when the landowner refuses, the hot-headed king orders his men to slaughter the entire household. But the landowner's wife, Abigail, gets word of David's plans and she acts to stop the massacre. She secretly prepares dinner and wine for David's entire army, loads it onto donkeys, and sends this huge caravan of servants and food out to David's camp. Then Abigail overtakes David in the wilderness and pleads her case to the great warrior. She starts by saying, basically, my husband is an idiot. And then she goes on to talk David out of his plans to attack. Now, Abigail's speech is a long one. It's about the same length as Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. And David does a new thing here. He pays attention to her. He listens to everything she says. He considers her words. And he's persuaded to abandon his plan and adopt hers instead. If we thought the New Testament days were patriarchal and misogynistic when women were seen and not heard, remember that David is a military general living a thousand years before Jesus did. Men didn't care what women thought or pay close attention to their point of view. Generals didn't take advice from wives, their own, or anyone else's. So David's openness to Abigail's perspective is really quite radical. And this openness to new insights, especially when they come from sources we're not used to considering, is a key virtue for leaders, for all of us. Because we are regularly confronted with something new, whether it's a strange food or an unorthodox perspective. Organizational consultant Simon Sinek has stated, one of the best paradoxes of leadership is a leader's need to be both stubborn and open-minded. Leaders have to discern what's creative, outside-the-box thinking and what's foolishness. And to do that, leaders have to listen to ideas and points of view that come from people whose habits or customs or appearances are very different from ours. But genuine openness to the other, the stranger, the new and different, is a critical virtue for anyone living in our 21st century world. The virtue of openness is fundamental now to becoming just a decent human being. So I hope you'll take the opportunity to consider something new this week. Listen and discern, distinguish your preferences from your principles. Take a new path, try a new food, open your heart and open your mind. Thanks for watching. I hope you'll pass along this edition of Leading with Spirit to someone else. Welcome, as always, to our new subscribers, and please explore LarryBuxton.com for more insights on leadership and character. Thanks, and God bless you.